All right, good morning all. I call the meeting of the Senior Activity Center Commission um, to order on September 18th at 8 a.m. Uh, you can all stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. To the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Sure. I right, will go around and say who's all here. I'm Stephanie Getz. Uh, Keith Jackson. Brandy Meyer. Joe Island. John Schulke. Candace Biss. Natasha Torrey. All right. Uh, has everyone got a chance to look oh, at the, oh, yeah. and Emily Rendell Rojo. That's okay, <laughs> Director of Senior Services. I'm not really on camera. So. All right. Uh, did everyone get a chance to review the minutes from May 15th? Any discussion? Otherwise, I call for a motion to approve. So moved. Second. All right. All in favor? Aye. All right. Uh, I also, if everyone got a chance to look at the July 17th minutes, any discussion? Call for an order to approve or a motion to approve. We're moved. Second. All right. All right. To the 2024 financial review. Sure. So um, hopefully you all took a look at this. I'm not going to go line by line, but if there are any questions, I will just say one thing is um, the finance department. The, this is what's reported as of late August, but that doesn't necessarily mean that the numbers are live because sometimes it takes up to a few months to reflect things. So like the property tax levy at the at the top, it says year to day actual as nothing because they just haven't moved it over yet. Um, advertising, we're right on track for the end of the year. Very nice, Jane. Um, that's bringing in um, organizations that are paying us to advertise in our newsletters. Um, membership fees are significantly down from what was budgeted. And the reason for that is because late last year was when we started taking Medicare reimbursements. And when folks have a membership through Silver Sneakers or Renew Active, they don't pay a membership fee. We get paid when they come in and check in. So um, I greatly underestimated how many people would qualify that. And it's actually more than half of our 1500 members are participating there. So. Um, that's why you'll see program service fees is doing pretty well because that's where the funding comes in there. Um, so the 2025 proposed budget that's going in front of council uh, has a better estimate of what we might see for membership fees and program fees for next year. But that's why there's a discrepancy there. Um, and then trip profits, mainly uh, that it's reflecting as nothing right now because the finance department has not moved profits over. What they do is um, a lot of times we have a lot, of a lot of money comes in as people pay us for trips. And so um, it could look really good for the books, but then we have to write a big fat check to the bus company. So they wait until the trips are done and then release the profits. But we are on track for 50 to $60,000 of revenue for trips this year. Um, so that's the revenue side. On the expenses, um, I'm just scanning here to see if there's anything wonky. And I know there's some, so I'll point it out. Um, Advertising and marketing, you'll see that that um, we're significantly over budget on advertising and marketing. But if you look down lower at office supplies, you'll see we're incredibly under budget on office supplies. So when we made the, the move um, for a lot of these uh, revenues and expenses to move from the friends over to the city last year, um, really our biggest expense after um, salaries is the newsletter, the monthly newsletter, printing it and mailing it to all of our members. And um, previously in the Friends, we tracked it separately as printing and postage, and the city rolled that into fewer accounts. And so they rolled it into office supplies when really the more accurate reflection is it's a marketing expense. So that's why um, the, the advertising and marketing is high and office supplies are incredibly low. And the, the budget draft that's going in front of council for 2025 rectifies that. So it won't, it won't look so strange. Um, everything else here, any other questions about things happening on the, um, on the expense side or the revenue side, any questions about how we're doing financially? All right. 
for utilities? Is that something that'll be caught up later? So utilities has continued to be, um, I actually work really closely with Mike Wilmis on setting this. Um, it's high, well, there's a few things at play. So last year, our department was actually being charged for the utilities of not only this building, but also the old senior center. So that's part of why it's high, but now they corrected that. And I believe the utilities associated with the old senior center are being handled in like the greater city facilities. I don't know, outside of this department. Um, we're also, um, we weren't sure when the gym would be completed and what type of effect that would have on the utilities. So, um, a while, and then with Lakeshore Community, Lakeshore Regional Child Advocacy Center, they're anticipating they'll be done by the end of this year. So um, again, there were just things at play that we weren't quite sure about. And so we will end the year significantly under budget on utilities. Um, but for next year, it's still just kind of a guess with adding on the gym and the CAC. When you say they'll be done, you mean with their construction? With their construction. So they're anticipating completion before end of year. That's what they tell me. Um, and then they'll be inhabiting that space and taking up electricity and whatnot. Okay. Hand down the table. I just have, I just have one question on the, on the trips. Mm -hmm. it, on a year to year basis now, are we doing better with a new building and everything else is, is going, are we getting more people on trips now than we did when there was another facility? Sure. So I think ooh, without having the number in front of me, because 2019 was kind of the last normal year, right? Um, we're ahead of where that was in 2019. Well, I'll say 2019 was kind of an anomaly because they did um, a European river cruise that for whatever reason, everybody decided they wanted to go on this river cruise and um, had more than like 35 people sign up for this river cruise. So I want to say they had like $30,000 of revenue just from that one trip in addition to the other things. But I, I believe their typical trip revenue in the, in the before times was closer to 30 or $40,000 total. And now we're actually, that might even be aggressive. It was probably normally between 20 and 30. Nate, Jane's nodding with me. So I, I think 2019 was a really good year, but most of the time it was closer to 20,000. So we've pretty much tripled. Okay. Well, and then you look at the number of trips and what you've done in the property make on those that you make sure that those should come back the next year mm -hmm. and then okay All mm -hmm. right. yeah so what we found um seems to be a good equilibrium for us as a department both on what our staff can handle as well as what our participants seem to be interested in is we tend to do three bus trips a year um three trips with mayflower um, which are the ones that are not necessarily international, but they're a more, more toward a luxury experience versus a bus trip because more of a budget travel. Um, and then uh, typically about once a month for a day trip. Thank you. Yeah. To accept the financial, if you want to. All right, All right. I'll call for a motion to accept the uh, financial review for 2024. So moved. Okay, perfect. All right, usage for August. Um, sure, so I know you all are familiar with seeing this report every time we meet. One thing I changed a little bit this time was I kept um, the same two months from last year as the most recent two months so that we can compare like June to June, July to July, um, August to August, or, I'm sorry, so three months. Um, but so you can kind of see here, actually Jane, that door has to stay open. Yeah, for open meetings and all that, but I but we have construction sound going on. Um, but so you can see our active membership continues to tick up. Um, unique visitors, um, pretty steady with last year. That's just unduplicated folks that come through the doors. Um, average daily attendance always dips in the summer, but similar to last year, um, and now even. Um, and new attendees, similar to the past, we always see a spike kind of in the start of the new year after the holidays, people set their um, resolutions and then they show up. But I will say day after, day after Labor Day, it was like a light switch went off and it's been nuts here. Like people's grandkids went back to school and they're back. 
So I want to say the last time I looked a couple days ago. Thank you. Yeah. So our membership is up to 1527 and we're anticipating that when the gym is done, we will see another uptick in new visitors, new members that want to utilize that space. Any questions for Emily on the usage? Okay. Um, sure. So for the gym update, um, really nothing new to share from last time, I think, except um, the date of the grand opening is October 29th from 2 to 5 p.m. Um, we will have a short program at, at 3. So there will be a live band um, and some refreshments and then the program at 3. So we'll have, you know, usually we ask um, the contractor to speak, uh, the architect, you know, might wave their hands. I'll, I'll make a little speech. Um, the mayor loves to give speeches. Um, so we'll have, we'll have a little program there, but it'll be... Um, I'd appreciate having you there if you're able to attend in the afternoon and help us spread the word. I, I know Jane was working on kind of the flyer, so we'll probably be going public with that in the next couple weeks to get people to have it on their calendars and plan to come. They haven't told me otherwise. So as far as the um, what's hanging out in there, if you if you take a look, they've made a lot of visible progress recently, so they're getting ready to put down the floor. Um, the painting is done. The one thing that, that's waiting, that's the reason why it's finishing when it's finishing is the um, final HVAC system will be delivered on October 4th. And then that needs a couple weeks for install and balancing. Um, but so they're, they're confident that October 29th is a, is a safe, well, not, I mean, I don't like to give them too much wiggle room because then other things can pop up. So, but this is the date. And also we will be hosting the presidential election polling site the following week. So they really, yeah, it'll be done. It'll be done. Any questions regarding the gym? All right, uh, next meeting, we did move the date. Um, Emily will be out of the town when it normally would have been, so we moved it to a week earlier rather than a week later, which would have been right around Thanksgiving. So I uh, hope everyone's okay with the November 13th date. That's Wednesday, November 13th, 8 a.m. Um, in this room as well. Anything else up for discussion? Could it be order? All right, I ask for a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. <laughs> all right, all in favor? Aye. 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 All right, meeting adjourned. Thank you. Good job.